know the top 10 irrefutable signs that we're living in the end time. It's mentioned in the book of Revelation. Where I'm going to show you, the Holy Spirit is going to teach you, and your mind's going to go. Pow! But the good thing is, you'll see with these signs, Jesus is growing closer to us, which means our heart is going to draw closer to him. Hey, I'm Wes Watching Brooks of Christ Watching Ministry, and I thank God for leading you to me that I could serve Jesus Christ by serving you the church in these last days. Now, it is my hope to teach you what the Lord taught me that you can learn and understand the book of Revelation. Because churches today teach old wine traditional teachings, not seeing what God is showing us that we might be corrected. But God did give us the book of Revelation for a reason. And he has led you to this ministry that the Holy Spirit can teach us all. That we can watch the signs he tells us to watch for leading to Jesus' second coming. Or if you're familiar with the book of Revelation and you're still a little doubtful and want more clarity. Or if you're passionate like me and want to join a community of watchmen, brothers and sisters in Christ. Watching the signs that God tells us to watch for because his message is clear. Then this ministry is for you. So if this speaks to your heart and you want to be part of this community, you want to watch so that you're anticipating and seeing the signs that God tells us to watch for, visit my website and subscribe. That way you get newsletters, blogs, videos, you get stores to help promote what the message of Revelation is, to help others engage in a conversation, to other believers to watch. And what you'll find that's different with this ministry is supporting scripture, evidence, and confirmation, and fulfillment of events that said to watch for that later came to pass. Just as the Lord Holy Spirit taught me to tell you that we all might be edified, comforted, and exhort the Lord. Because the Lord tells us what prophecy is for. So that way you may know the, this is the school of the Holy Spirit. And we're students. Top 10 irrefutable signs we are living in the end times of the book of Revelation. Now a quick brief backstory to, that was hard to say, quick brief backstory to the book of Revelation is that first it's written by the disciple John, not John the Baptist, but the disciple John, the one where the Bible talks about the one whom the Lord loved, that guy, one of the fishermen friends of Peter and his brother uh, Andrew. He was then taken in exile to this island called Patmos, which was like a Roman territory at the time. And then one day, Jesus, when he's in heaven, calls him up to heaven to then see the future and as he sees the future son of God Jesus tells him to write everything he sees down as it will lead to Jesus second coming so that's what the book of Revelation about it's called the revelation of Jesus Christ not just book of Revelation it's the revelation of Jesus Christ it's when all mystery questions doubts is answered because God will reveal the son of God to the world as he is he will put a nail in the coffin and answer any doubtful question and settle any debate of is there a god because there will be this person named jesus coming on the cloud so that's what the book of revelation is about with a series of events now what you're going to see happening here is that you'll see the top 10 signs happening now from the book of revelation chapter 17. most will probably refute this and say there's no way that we will even be here christians i'm talking about after chapter 4 because the word church isn't mentioned after chapter 4 therefore there shouldn't be any Christians after chapter 4 however you're gonna see here with chapter 17 that we are here and chapter 17 is happening now so the disciple John is taken into heaven and he, God shows him this vision now what you'll see here is an image that God shows him in this vision and mind you in heaven time does not work the same as it works on earth see remember in all the gospels in all the books prior to the book of revelation there are events and documents and testimonies of things that happen in chronological order so you cannot read the book of revelation in chronological order because it's taken in a realm or a dimension that time works differently in this case here with revelation chapter 17 god shows john a vision a creature a woman sitting on a beast with seven heads and ten horns now she has on purple and red and she has on gold and pearls and jewelry and she has a cup filled with blood now this is a metaphor or a personification of what god sees on earth for example you know how god calls jesus the lamb of god 
Now, when God calls his son the Lamb of God and others call him the Lamb of God, we're not looking for a four-legged creature, right? It's just a metaphor or a personification that reflects the characteristic of Jesus Christ. He's a humble following sheep that follows his father. So with the same thing with this beast that we see in chapter 17, this beast is an image or a personification of how God sees something on earth. So we're going to see this in chapter 17. We're going to read and you're going to see the top 10 signs. Let's do this. And when God shows John this image of this beast and this woman, he says, now when you see this, it's a sign in the end because it's part of the revelation of Jesus Christ. Just know it's leading to the revealing of Jesus Christ. So let's read chapter 17. Chapter 17. Now mind you that one of these angels in heaven, one of the seven holy angels of, in heaven is escorting John around, kind of like showing him the place. Like, hey, John, yeah, that's where God sits over there. Over there, that's Gabriel. You know him, right? Uh, yeah, that's Michael. You know, Mike, 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 Michael, Michael, Michael. I got John here. Yeah, John, he's with Jesus' crew. Yeah, I got John over here. So the angel is showing John the disciple around. And he goes into John chapter 17, showing what God is showing John. Chapter 17, one of the seven angels who the seven who had the seven bowls came and talked with me saying, Come, and I will show you the judgments of the great harlot who had said so many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast with full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abomination and, full, and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, Mother of Hollies, and of the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. But the angel said to me, why do you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman of the beast who carries her, which, is, which has seven heads and ten horns. The beast which you saw was and is not and will send out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. And when they see the beast... That was and is not and yet is. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads which are seven mountains on which the woman sits. There are seven kings. Five have fallen. One is and the other has not come yet. And when he comes he must continue for a short time. The beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth. And is also of the seven and is going to perdition. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as of yet, but they received authority for one hour as kings with the beast. So what you just read here and heard is that God is talking about a world religious power that's going to grow and influence the world. And here's a clue to understand just how bad this is, that this global influence of this religion that will map the world, God says if anyone marvels this beast, this image that God is showing him, the woman would the woman sitting on the beast with seven heads and ten horns. Look what God says about people who marvel it. Verse 8. It says, And those who dwell on the earth will marvel. So people are looking at it and they're just like, Oh, look, it's him. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. So what you're seeing is that God is saying, anyone marvels this thing, worships this thing, when they see it, it's an indication that their names are not written in heaven. They're not saved. God is giving you the truth of their heart because a true believer, a true born-again Christian, a true person who loves Jesus in their heart will not marvel at this thing. That's the truth. God is saying is that when they see it, when they marvel it, it's an outward reflection of an inward mystery are they saved so if they marvel it they're not saved if they don't then they're saved first sign number one to know that these are the end times and we're living in the book of revelation is that the one words read so what world religious power what world religious influence today can be identified with wearing red three that's not a three three two 
One, the cardinal for the Roman Catholic Church, identified with wearing red. Sign number two, the woman is identified with wearing purple. So what world religious power is identified with wearing purple? Today, not 50 years ago, not 100 years ago, what world religious power today that has influence over the world can be identified with wearing purple? The bishops of the Roman Catholic Church. Sign number three, the woman is identified having pearls and gold and precious stones. Well, what in the world could that mean? Well, since we seem to be pointing in the direction of the Roman Catholic Church, is there any indication that they were gold and precious stones and pearls? Yes. The Pope's tiaras are adorned with pearls, gold, and precious stones. Sign number four. The woman is has a golden cup in her hand where she gets drunk by drinking the blood of Christian martyrs. And what does that mean? Well, since we're pointing again back to the Roman Catholic Church, do we have any historic, factual evidence to support that the Catholic Church has killed Christians? Yes, we have the Spanish Inquisition. We also have Queen Mary. We have those two just alone for killing thousands upon thousands of Christians who rejected the papacy, who rejected the Pope, who rejected Catholicism, and Queen Mary considered them heretics had them burnt alive and killed in the Spanish Inquisition is historically known for the torture and techniques for getting them to repent and obey the papacy and the Pope, which many were killed because they didn't. And that is explained with the blood of the martyrs. But let's say I'm stretching. Let's say I'm just making this stuff up. Hmm. If the woman has a golden cup and the Holy Spirit seems to be pointing to the Roman Catholic Church, is there a golden cup that's represented in the Roman Catholic Church? Mass! It starts with a golden cup. Sign number five. The angel tells John that, you know those seven heads that you see on the beast? Well, they're actually seven mountains. Don't get confused by anyone that tells you there's seven kingdoms. It's a mountain, it's a mountain, it's a mountain. A big, giant hill. When, remember the scripture of Jesus giving a servant on the mount? It's the same Greek word used there as the same Greek word used here. So don't let anyone convince you that that means kingdom. They wouldn't say Jesus gave a sermon on the kingdom, right? Exactly. So this means giant hill or mountain. So we have the woman sits in the middle of seven mountains, or as she sits in the middle of seven heads. So since the Lord Holy Spirit is teaching and pointing to the Roman Catholic Church, what could that mean? That's right. Vatican sits in the middle of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mountains. The Vatican sits in the middle of seven mountains, just as the woman sits in the middle of seven heads. Do you like what you see so far? Don't, hey, it's not my teaching, it's the Lord's. Then the Lord goes to tell us that the seven heads are actually seven kings. Now, we could be thinking that this is something totally left field because, well, the Vatican doesn't have any kings. But you're wrong. If you go to Vatican's website, their state department tells you that Vatican State, which is a city state, it's a state within a state, a state within a country, its own province, its own sovereign territory, that Vatican State is a monarchy government and its ruler is the Pope, who is the executive, legislative, and judicial leader for all branches of that government, that monarchy government. So if a man is in charge of a monarchy government, that makes him a king. So what we may call popes, God says, by looking at their own website to tell you the truth, that popes are kings. So sign number six. Five of these kings have fallen. So God tells us leading to the end times, God will count down to the last seven popes. And of the seven, the first five have fallen. So let's just count backwards to the last five and see what we get. We have the first one that's fallen. The second one has fallen. The third one has fallen. The fourth one has fallen. The fifth one has fallen. So far, these five popes have died. They have fallen. Popes go to that throne to die. It's an appointment where they go and serve a lifetime and then they die. And we see that five of them have died. 
just as the Lord said. Sign number seven says that one is, one is what? The six. So we have the five that are fallen and one is the six. So what is that? Well, it's this Pope here, John Paul II. He's the six, which is the one is. Sign number eight. It says the one who's the seventh will be there a short time. So if this book in God's word is accurate, whosoever's after the six, the seventh must be there for a short time. That's the prophecy knowing that we're living in the pages of Revelation. That whoever's after the six, he must be there a short time. Different than the ones before him. And what do you know? The Pope right after Pope John Paul, who was the number six, was Pope Benedict. And Pope Benedict is the seventh. And guess what? He was there for a short time. In the 600 year history of the Roman Catholic Church, this is the first time a Pope has went there to resign. Because remember, Popes go there to die, and he went there fulfilling the scripture, Revelation 17, 10, and the other has not come yet, the seventh, and when he comes, he must continue for a short time. Sign number eight, right in your face, February 13. And on a side note, the churches talk about this, Christian television channels talk about this, prophecy watches, did they talk about this? It's been quiet. But this ministry has been raised up by God. This ministry has been given a job by the Lord Jesus to serve you. And I'm saying it, and I've been watching, so now let's watch sign number nine. Just to recap so you can really take this in. Sign number nine, verse 11. The beast that was and is not is himself. Do you hear that? Is himself. For now we're talking about a person. This person is the eighth. Says again, the beast that was not is himself, also the eighth. So this is a person who's the eighth after the seventh. Says that, and it's also of the seven that's going to perdition. So whoever's the eighth after this pope means that he is the beast. He is the carnate incarnation of this image that God is showing John. He is the beast that the Bible calls the false prophet. And who was the person after Pope Benedict? Who was the pope after the seventh? Who is the pope after the fulfilled prophecy of the one who will be there for a short time? Pope Francis. Pope Francis is the eighth. Pope Francis is the beast. Pope Francis is by what God is saying, the one who's the false prophet, the beast of the sea. I know you probably may find this so mind blowing and so amazing, but it's the truth. Notice how everything just fits. I didn't twist anything, manipulate words, move stuff left, right, do some magic trick with my hands and make try to convince you i just showed you what god's word said showed you what god is showing us and its simplicity proves that it's true sign number 10 last one the 10 horns which you saw are 10 kings who have received no kingdom as of yet but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast so the next sign is we have to watch for 10 horns now god tells us that these 10 horns are actually 10 kings and that these kings are going to receive power and authority that they must not have that they're later going to get. And what does that mean? Well, since God is poured into the Vatican initially, and the Vatican just happens to be in this place called Europe, you know how many royal families are in Europe? Ten. You know how many of them are males, kings of monarchs? Eight. Which leaves Queen of Denmark, Queen of England, those two are the last two remaining to fulfill a 10 monarchy royal family of kings. 10 horns, 10 kings, 10 monarchies in Europe. So the Lord is telling us to watch for when Europe's 10 royal families have 10 kings, 10 male monarchs ruling the throne, that will fulfill the prophecy of Revelation 17, 12. The 10 horns will be here. And just to give you a little note, I've been saying this since 2013. And if you look at the video that I did, I said on May 6th, the very same thing you just heard. Watch for a new king in UK with Queen Elizabeth's removal, and watch for a new king in Denmark with Queen Margaret's removal. And on two days later, the news reported, Queen Elizabeth prepares Charles for the throne. God just confirmed what I said two days before. And then a year or two later, Queen Margaret's husband said he wanted to be king of Denmark instead of prince of Denmark. 
Because see, when queens marry a prince, they don't automatically become king. Like a king who marries a princess, she can automatically become queen. So he said he wants to be king of Denmark. But that didn't happen because now Queen Elizabeth's husband and Queen Margaret's husband, they both retired. So now for the first time in the monarchy history of Denmark and UK, Queen Elizabeth and Queen Margaret are serving their royal duties alone by themselves in their old, old age, which gives the impression that this is going to be a hard burden to carry, which means a new king in UK and a new king in Denmark will give the fulfillment to what I've been telling you to watch for, Revelation 17, 12. So there you go, folks. Those are the top 10 signs showing that we are here living in the book of Revelation, chapter 17. So if anyone tells you, no, we're not going to be here after chapter 4, but how do you explain what God is showing us? Because it's in chapter 17, which is after chapter 4, and we're still here. So humble your hearts. Let God's truth sink in there. Accept the truth and just get prepared to keep watching because Jesus is coming. So watch. I'm Wes Watchman Brooks of Christ Watcher Ministry. I hope this served you well. Make sure you definitely subscribe to this channel or visit my website and subscribe. That way I can keep it posted. And leave me a comment. Let me know if this video was informative. Let me know what your thoughts are. And I will definitely get back to you and so we can engage and converse and stay a tight-knit community of brothers and sisters in Christ who are watching for our Lord's return. Thank you for watching. Later.